Hi, folks. So here we're going to look at M circles and N circles when doing Nyquist analysis. Now, these are a little bit um, confined to particular types of systems. And what I mean by that is we're going to be constrain our focus on unity feedback systems. You can actually use these for non-unity feedback, but you have to you know, jump through an extra hoop or two. Not too bad, but you just have to be aware of it. But we're just going to focus on the unity feedback approach. All right, so um, the Nyquist plot is, you know, a mapping of the Nyquist contour through the loop transfer function into what we call a Nyquist plot. But even though that's a loop transfer sort of a thing, we can actually get the closed loop frequency response from that Nyquist plot by superimposing onto the plot, onto the grid paper, if you will, a bunch of M circles and N circles. So what M circles are, are circles of constant closed loop magnitude. So if you were to form the closed loop transfer function, GCL, then what you're looking at with these M circles are constant magnitude. So things like 6 dB, 10 dB, negative 3 dB, things like that. And N circles, as you might imagine, are constant closed loop phase contours or circles um, that are superimposed onto your Nyquist grid. Now, you can imagine getting, you know, the actual complete closed loop frequency response is a bit of a chore. You'd have to sit there and look for all the intersection points of your M circles and N circles and find out what frequency they correspond to from your Nyquist plot and then transcribe those into a table or a Bode plot, something like that. But you can do it. But normally what we use this for is getting particular things out of the Nyquist plot. Things like um, the resonant peak, if it has one, and the, the magnitude of that resonant peak and the frequency that it occurs at. And the way that you get it is you look for where your Nyquist plot is tangent to an M circle. Whatever that M circle is, in terms of dB, that's the resonant peak. And the frequency that that Nyquist plot kisses the M circle is the um, resonant frequency. You can also get the closed loop bandwidth by finding where your Nyquist plot crosses negative 3 dB. Now, you don't have to do this, but it's kind of nice to identify the positive imaginary axis part of your Nyquist plot. If you made one that has both positive and negative, like you might get out of MATLAB, it just makes, your, your, um, makes things a little easier, not so much for this, but later when we start looking at gain margin and phase margin. Here's just a little bit of the background on this. Um, to get the M circles, what we're doing is we're forming the closed loop transfer function, GL over 1 plus GL. And that's why we're constraining our focus to unity feedback systems, by the way. And if we call that transfer function M, then what we'll do next is consider GL as being a complex number in rectangular form. And when you make that substitution, maybe using some abbreviations of X and Y for the real and imaginary parts of G, L, J, omega, then you get, for the magnitude of M, a wonderful-looking equation of a circle. And hence, the idea of an M circle. So you pick your M, let's say 3 dB, stab it into this equation, and you'll get the equation of a circle. There's this one little strange point for m equal 1 um, where you just get a, a line. And we'll see that when we look at these things in MATLAB in just a minute. You can do the same thing for the n circles, but now it's in terms of phase. So you get the phase of GL over 1 plus GL. And again, you get the equation of a line, or a circle. <laughs> it's, an, it's an n circle. Here are some typical values. M and in dB in red, and not dB in black. And for N, typical values, again, in, in degrees, just like you might with a Bode plot. So 
So now what we'll do is switch over to MATLAB, take a look at an example, and how about we do this? We'll just take this example and start somewhere on the Nyquist plot with a, with a click so that we can see the frequency and um, where we are on that Nyquist plot and just sort of move it along through the different M circles and see what we get. Okay. So let me make up a transfer function here. How about this one? Let's see, this is going to have three poles. How about do this? Oops, if I type this in right. So what we're doing is taking, you know, a piece of that uh, denominator, 1, 4, 3, so that's a pole at negative 1 and negative 3, and then convolving that with a pole at, at negative 30, and we get something like this. Okay, so now let's have a look at the MATLAB generated Nyquist plot. That's a nice looking Nyquist plot. There is some interesting things happening here in terms of um, you know, where it crosses the real axis, but that isn't so much our focus. So let's just control click on this thing and have a look at the grid. So when you say grid in a Nyquist plot, MATLAB assumes that you want to see some uh, M circles. It's not showing the N circles, just the M circles. So that's what we'll confine our, our um, work to. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. Oops. And we can see our M circles. This is the, down here is um, this lower part of the Nyquist plot is actually the um, um, the positive J omega axis. So we'll start there and just sort of make our way up. But before we do that, you can see these M circles. They don't look like circles here because the axes aren't quite the same. But um, you can see we have a 2 dB, a 4 dB, a 6, and a 10. And then we go negative. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. Now, how about if I do this? I'm going to say, I'll go something like that. So we'll just keep track over here of the points that we find as we make our way around that, that plot. So I'm going to turn on the pointer, little clicker thing, and start here and get on this M circle. That M circle is a 2 dB M circle and the frequency is 4.75. So I'm going to go um, 4.75 is at 2 dB. And now I'll just move this along. And now we're at the 4 dB M circle, or N circle, and we have a 6.16 in 4 dB. And we get to there, that's a 6 dB. And it's at 7.07, 6 dB. What's that one? Oh, that's at 10 dB. Uh, maybe a little closer in like that. So about 8.14, and that's 10 dB. And it's about, oh, there's a little tiny one there. So I'm going to back this off just a little bit and zoom in just a little bit more. Oh, interesting. So, now, that's curious that at 20 dB, this thing, this um, uh, Nyquist plot is pretty much tangent to that, um, to that M circle, or N circle. So, let's have a look at something. Going to go back into here and let's create the closed loop transfer function of this. And we'll make a Bode plot of it. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, that was unfortunate. So let's make our Nyquist plot again. And how about we do this? 
I had that zoomed in so nicely. Maybe we'll just do it again. Put a grid on it. Zoom, zoom. And zoom, zoom. And put a point on it. just as a sanity check to make sure everything is the same so about 8.17 and that was 10 dB and we were looking at that little pretty much a tangent point there but let's look at our closed loop Bode plot for a second I'll put a grid on it and let's click here and get up to that little top right there look at that so our resonant peak is about 19.7 dB, let's call it 20, at a frequency of 9.56 radians per second. And if we look over at the Nyquist plot, look at that. Frequency 9.7 radians per second, and we're just kissing that 20 dB. Oh, and now it looks like a nice M circle. So that is the resonant peak, right, where the Nyquist plot kisses a... M circle. And the frequency that it happens at, we can get right off the Nyquist plot. How cool is that? So now let's keep following this around and find our negative 3 dB point. Here's negative 2, negative 4. I need to get it in between those two things. Is it about, I'm going to call it there. Maybe a little bit in the middle. There we go. So that's at 14.6 radians per second. Supposedly that's the negative 3 dB point. If I go to the Bode plot and I move this down to negative 3 dB, which is our bandwidth, our closed loop bandwidth, I get about that. Look at that. About 14 radians per second. Oh, that's not radian. About, ugh. Oh, this is painful. I don't know, close enough. 14.6 radians per second, negative 3 dB. And that's exactly what we see over here in the Nyquist plot. It all works. Okay, so that's about it, really. Um, I didn't use all these little points over here, but if we wanted to use them, we certainly could. For instance, if we wanted to find the point on, uh, verify, let's say, this point, the 4.75 radians per second and 2 dB, I just move this over to here to 2 dB. And there it is, close enough. Okay, so that's how you can construct a closed loop frequency response from a Nyquist plot of your loop transfer function using M circles. And furthermore, how to find the resonant peak the frequency at which the, at which the resonant peak occurs at, and the bandwidth, closed loop bandwidth, that is. Okay, enjoy that.